For this song, we're looking at Ed Sheeran's Afterglow. Really nice song. Capo at fret 4, we'll get into that later. And your end result should be something like this. Now we're going to first of all just go through the chord shapes, so we're going to focus on what is our fretting hand doing for starters. I'd like us to notice that for the G, the C add 9, the D sus 4 and the E minor 7, the first four chords, we're not going to move fingers 3 and 4, they're going to stay put the whole way through. So finger 1 goes here, 5th string, middle finger to the top, 6th string, this is your new way of playing G. Not like that with the pinky off, but like this with the ring finger number three on the second string, pinky number four on the bottom. When we transition and change from there to the C add nine, all that happens is fingers one and two come down a string and three and four stay as they were. D sus four, lose the middle finger, first finger comes down one more, E minus seven, first finger goes back to the fifth, second string underneath it, and you can see that not much is really happening with our strumming hand. One more time, G, all six strings must be strummed. C at nine, five strings must be strummed. D sus four, four strings. And E minor seven, all six again. Now we're going to add on the strumming pattern, which should be something like this. I did mention in the beginning of the video as well that the capo is at fret four, so please make sure your capo is at the 4th fret, otherwise your songs aren't going to work. Here's my capo setting here. Now I'm going to play with the plectrum for this one. You may use fingers as well, so if you do this, or use a plectrum, there is a very subtle difference, and I'm not too fussy with that. Go with the one that you find more relaxed to play with, the one that you enjoy playing with. Now on the rhythm, you're counting 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. So slow motion, down, up, up, down. And I find that some variations in the song as well, he adds an extra strum at the end as well, an extra up strum. So you'll maybe do this sometimes. So you can play around with it, but there's a little bit of license to freestyle the song, a bit of own interpretation if you want to call it that. And on the breakdown, you're looking at two G's, so you're going to count one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and two C's. Remember with the C's, fingers one and two, come down a string, try your best not to strum the sixth string. Twice through in the C at nine. For the D sus four, middle finger off, as you can see, first finger goes into the third string, and now it's from the bottom four only once. Minus seven, back to the fifth, second finger back in there. You can see it in the left hand corner of your viewer. All six strings for E minus seven, one string, and then back to C at nine that we did earlier, which is going to go through twice. So to break it down, two G's, two C at nines, one through D sus four, one through E minus seven, back to two C's or C at nines. Let's play that together. Both of us. One, two, three, four, and... your verse. Now next up we're going to focus more onto your fretting hand again because there are going to be little subtle differences and I just want to get different angles because sometimes different angles help us with different ideas and techniques we maybe might have missed. Now when it comes to the pre-chorus we were love drunk waiting on a miracle. Um, on the PDF that I took my chords from they said C at 9, G and D sus 4 but Personally, I find that a D actually sounds more like the original. So we're going to do this instead for the pre-chorus. Two C add lines. G and D. It sounds nice and more like the 
original if you listen carefully um, when you go to the D instead of the D sus fourth the pre-chorus so we're not going to do this this would be wrong for example <laughs> note needs to be resolved like that instead so for your pre-chorus c add nine twice g and normal d no pinky so it's the first time in the song that you're going to lose the pinky and the chord structure there super easy just c add nines g d sus four okay next up looking at the chorus now also with the pre-chorus you'll hear these subtle changes as he's building up towards the chorus and um, it doesn't seem to have a set fixed pattern, although there are sort of common themes. So I want you to listen carefully for little extras I'm going to put inside here. Can you hear that little extra, little flick there? And even from the beginning on the C at 9. can hear a little extra double up so listen carefully to this song and try and add your own sort of freestyle rhythm to that try your and try and freestyle it as you sees fit to write down every single bar for bar exactly the rhythm that Ed Sheeran is using is going to be a lot of work and it's going to take all the enjoyment out of just playing a really fantastic awesome song and i'd also like to encourage you to freestyle your rhythm that you got control of your own playing so if you feel like you want to add something you can um if you want to sort of do like that's not in the song but it sounded pretty cool so the nice thing is if you can control the rhythm you're not sort of tied up or restricted so play around enjoy the instrument but what i'm giving you so far is the basic rhythms that will get you going so i hope you're up to, up to par with it so far and now onto the chorus okay with your chorus the only real difference between the pre-chorus and the chorus is if you look at the second line of i will hold onto the afterglow there's no more d sus at the corner which we said d sounds nicer anyway so on the pdf that i sent you um, that's what I pulled off the internet. I'm going to change it on the video rather play a D for the pre-chorus and the chorus and a D sus4 for the verses. It's going to sound great. Trust me with this. So your chorus C at 9 Sorry, two C at 9s dynamics of the song what we mean by dynamics is loud and soft you can hear certain parts and sort of builds up the music then he goes quiet and he breaks it down so it's got a, a certain sort of loud and quiet a sense of flow to it where he's like focusing and getting sort of more power into it and where he's pulling back when he goes back to the verse for example so get to know the song in short of here it's not really a difficult song it's just a really stunning song well written uh, as Ed Sheeran songs are <laughs> okay and I hope that you got the rhythm pattern for it I hope you enjoyed it again using pick um, fingers and remind how you strum but everything that I've shown you should be able to get you through the song if you have any questions please don't hesitate to give me a call have a great week cheers bye